Today we're going to talk about whether you should join Allstate, what are their pros and cons, how do they compare in the market as far as prices, and what are the reviews in general? How well are they doing? There's a couple pieces in this video that you're going to find unique where the data doesn't quite line up with reality. And we're going to dive into that through this video. I'm Mark Flockhart with Think Insurance. If you get any value out of this, definitely smash the thumbs up button. That helps me the most. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, that's down there below. Also, Allstate is one of the companies that my sponsor works with. If you're interested in getting a quote, you might as well shop them across 30 plus companies with Allstate. I'll put the link to cover insurance in the description below. That's my recommendation of where I would start with. If you want to go direct to the website, that's perfectly fine as well, but you might as well shop multiple companies while doing the same thing. That's one of the unique things that we're going to start off with Allstate is how can one company shop all of them with Allstate when Allstate is its own brand? Similar to other companies like Farmers or State Farm or Allstate, right? Those guys are kind of the big guys in the market and Allstate is in the top five in general. Allstate has started to branch out similar to what Progressive has done where they allow exclusive agents people that only sell the Allstate brand, and they can technically sell other brands in most cases when they're not competitive. The other option is independent agents, which is myself, where we can sell tons of companies. I have a little bit of cheat sheet. I might look over to my left a little bit because I did go to multiple websites to compare the data. This is straight from Allstate in their history. They started in 1930. Honestly, I didn't find a whole lot of exciting information about them. There was a guy that started it that's great. The cool part and unique part is it actually started as a company from Sears Roebuck and they eventually broke off onto their own because of the need. So in April 17, 1931, Allstate's name was borrowed from a tire. That's interesting. In a catalog in the Sears mechanical department. That was pretty cool to find out, kind of unique thing that I never knew. In 1939, they startled the industry by allowing to rate based on age, vehicle use, and mileage. This was something that was adopted across the board several years later. It was very impactful, similar to what some companies are doing trying to rate just on the driving record. You may have heard their slogan, you're in good hands, that's their logo, and that actually didn't start until 1950, so several decades after they were a company. And by 1969, they had over 1.47 billion premium, they had 11 million policies and 30,000 employees. The end of 1983, they became the largest claim staff with 12,500 claims employees. That's powerful. That actually is a big piece that I liked because it shows that they weren't just looking to pull in the dollars. They wanted to make the claims process really powerful. We're going to talk about that here in the discount section because that actually relates to one of their unique coverages that they carry. Just to speed up the history, so 1990, they became 100% publicly owned, so they no longer were owned by Sears Roebuck, a company ahead of them. It was completely public. 1995, Sears sold and spun off the last remaining shares, so that was the official 100% publicly owned. And then 1996, Allstate was officially launched for consumers in general. Diversity is a very powerful thing in the world today where we've got all of the different uh, genders and the different uh, classifications and skin colors and all of that, right? So that's a powerful thing and some companies don't do a good job with that and I want to stay as far away from them as possible. Allstate, even back in the 90s, was doing great with this. They are actually listed multiple times. I didn't write the exact dates because it was so often that they were in the top 50 companies to work for. It started off with mothers, and then they actually got in the top for Asians and African Americans and Hispanics. So these are companies that has a wide diversity, and I think that speaks a lot to the culture of a company which to me is equally powerful if I'm gonna put my money and investment into allowing them to protect me. And then unfortunately, the last major update that I saw was in 2009, and they didn't even say what it was. There really just wasn't anything exciting that I personally have seen, and maybe you can let me know in the comments below if there's something that I missed. As far as the price comparison, they're actually not that competitive. You'll find out when you talk to an Allstate agent, they're going to focus on brand and customer loyalty, customer focus. 
they're very good like other companies that do customer centric focus where they're going to win you over by talking about certain coverages and giving you more options and being that one size fits all company and they're just going to try to take care of you as best they can and there's a premium to that some people are willing to pay their annual average cost for insurance is 696 dollars per year and then their annual cost for full coverage is 1921 depending on the state that you're in that may be fairly expensive but in michigan that's kind of average that's pretty normal and this is across the board this isn't any specific state according to zebra.com their competitiveness is all state is actually at the top versus their competitors farmers is the next closest at 131 dollars versus 170 dollars on an average monthly premium it's funny because I'm trying not to say farmers a lot in this video, but they're the ones that come to mind when I think of Allstate. I think of them as the biggest competitor, which is unique because all of their metrics and their prices are very similar to what farmers insurance does. State Farm came and beat them out, which is also a review we did as well. And the national average was actually a little bit higher than the other companies. So we've got Nationwide, which I'm actually surprised that they came in competitive in this situation. They're good in a lot of states, but they're not so great in a lot of states as well. So that's a piece that came in the best in this scenario. And when you look at the different groups, it's not just the average across the board. You might be 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever the age is. Well, if we look at our chart, we have the teens. They are the highest. They're ridiculously cost. They're also more expensive for 20s. They're more expensive for 30s. They're more expensive for 40s, 50s, and 60s. And we're not talking just a little bit here. We're talking 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars plus per month for its competitors. Now, are we gonna see a correlation to where Allstate has more to offer than its competitors to make that jump worth what we're talking about? What's crazy is if you have a violation, usually I say progressive, progressive, progressive. They're the best route or Geico is sometimes good, right? But they go crazy. So let's compare. Let's just say a speeding ticket. We've got Allstate at 222 on average versus the national average 153. State Farm fell a little bit below that, Progressive fell a little bit below that, and Geico fell a lot below that, which is a little bit weird to me because Geico isn't always the best with claims. They tend to be more competitive with young drivers, and then if there's a ticket involved, then they go a little bit crazy as far as the price goes. In this chart, I'm going to say I don't necessarily agree with the tickets and the accidents in the DUI piece because I think, yes, the DUI is probably a high ranker, but I think the rest of it, they're going to fall right in line with most companies. If you got a ticket, I wouldn't shy away from Allstate in either which way. As far as the discounts, there's nothing to really report. They have everything that everybody else has. And I didn't see anything on their website where it talked about the additional discounts that they give over anybody else. If anything, the multi-policy discount was lower than most companies where you're averaging about 15 to 20 some odd percent. And in my cases, I've seen more closer to the 20 plus percent off where Allstate was in the teens. And it wasn't very exciting to see that, but they had other discounts allocated in different places. So they put more emphasis on driving. They've got the Teen Smart program. The Smart Student discount was a little bit better than most companies when you're 25 and younger. And then the early pay discount gave you some extra bonuses, but most companies do that. I'll just rattle off the ones that they really promoted was anti-lock brake discount, anti-theft, multi-policy discount, early signing discount, responsible payer was actually their larger one. So if you pay on time and don't have claims, they like that. Smart student discount, new car discount, easy pay plan, Allstate smart discount, which is their uh, telematic system, full pay, safe driving club. And that's really the main pieces that they displayed when I went there. As far as glass door, if you're used to seeing the Amazon stars on something, the glass door actually looked amazing. It was like four out of five stars. But if you dive into it, it's really like the three to three and a half out of five stars. It looked like in general, the employees were happy. That's what I care about as a consumer and I'm gonna purchase them, their insurance. I wanna make sure that the person's coming into work and they're going to take care of me and they're not worried about what's next with their job and all of that craziness. 
The part about the glass door, and I encourage you to go check out the reviews yourself, is a lot of people don't have a huge backing for the CEO. It was about 60%, which isn't horrible. 53% would recommend them. So half the people wouldn't even recommend them to friends. And they had about a 45% positive outlook. So 45% think that they have a positive outlook. That's not very good. And I can see that because if we look at their history, like I said, 2009, we're talking over a decade since they've updated any major changes and they've really shown that they're doing things differently than other companies. They don't really have to because they're large enough and they market enough to where they've got a good product. It's just there's nothing new coming out of the pipeline and it's hard to get employees excited. But none of them really complained and said that they absolutely hated working there. The pros that employees are saying is the work-life balance was good. The health benefits was good. They had a work from home opportunity and there's great people to work with. So that's a great place to be. The cons they said on average was work-life balance wasn't so great. The long hours, which adds to the work-life balance and the no benefits, low pay, and then upper management. I don't quite understand the no benefits when they say there's benefits. I would feel safe that the benefits is, are there. It probably depends if you're the owner of an Allstate shop versus the person that works at their call center. And that's the tough part about getting the employee from Glassdoor, because we could be comparing the actual Allstate corporation versus the Allstate office that's the local place. If you've worked at any insurance company or have seen an insurance company, it's a little tougher in that market. When you're working that environment, a lot of these owners really weren't designed to manage, and a lot of them have got some learning to do. Some are amazing, they are absolutely out of this world great, but there are those good and those bad apples mixed together. Consumer reviews, I did a ton of research here. So I'm gonna read you some reviews here in just a moment. And we're going to just kind of summarize what everybody talked about. This is the part where it didn't match up with what was being said. And I think a lot of this is because the companies that you're gonna see these reviews on, we're looking at Zebra, Clearsurance, Allstate itself, Nerd Wallet, Wallet Hub, those companies, get commissions when you go with them. Zebra gave them four out of five stars, but that's Zebra, the reviewers. Zebra customers, so people that are actually with Allstate, gave them a 4.3, so a little bit better than the company reviewing them. The Allstate agents alone got 4.13 out of five stars, so that's from Allstate. That's Okay, that's not bad. Value Penguin gave him a 3.2 out of five stars. Clear Insurance gave him four out of five. The impact piece of them, I say they weigh more than all of the other reviews because they had over 11,000 reviews. A lot of people that are giving their feedback and they were generally happy. Nerd Wallet, four and a half out of five stars. And the overall, when you add them all together, was 3.47 out of five stars. That sounds great. However, when we compare them to the other companies, State Farm, Geico, Progressive, those are their major competitors. They didn't do as well. And what I did is I actually used Clearsurance because they had the most reviews. They had 11,000 plus reviews as my example. I'm gonna read you a few of the most recent one. I'm actually going live right now while we're making this video and checking them out. The first one says way overpriced and will scam you if you cancel. That was January 6th of 2022. The next one, January 2nd of 2022, untrained, ignorant customer service team and managers. Uh, All state sucks in December 17 of 21. Uh, August 9th of 21, unprofessional agent. They gave him three, which was the best. All of these are one stars. Also, they need to watch them and DriveWise is a scam. That was July of 21, also a two star. Next one is a one star. Bizarre corporate underwriting policies, July 2nd, 21. And it just goes on like that. There's a lot of negative reviews recently that's based on what I'm doing without filtering and out touching anything. That's one of the questions I would say that you guys need to figure out when you're looking at these uh, all in doo-doo hands, June 17 to 21. There, it just keeps going. I don't understand how these companies are able to put themselves in such a good limelight when they're looking at reviews. If we go a little bit further, so we go to January of last year, 2021, five-star review, five-star review, three-star review, 
four star review, another one star, uh, five star review, five star review, all state, uh, more like all great, all state, just that's all they put, <laughs> all state auto insurance, all state, these almost look kind of fake as far as titles, best insurance rates compared to other companies, all state is a leader company. So last year, amazing reviews, at least the small sample that I'm reading to you. You gotta look at them yourself to really decide what you think. This year, not so great reviews. So we need to find out in your area, is it price, is it coverage, is it claims? Because claims is really all I care about in most cases. If you like and agree on the price and you like the coverage that you're getting, then really the them taking care of you part is the piece that you're looking at next. That's also one of the pieces that they're lacking on. In general, they're lower than average, according to the NAIC, this is from a website that I got from Business Insider, for complaints against Allstate, Allstate's complaints were a bit higher, meaning that there were more complaints filed against Allstate than average. You kind of see that with the reviews where there's a lot more complaints and issues coming through in the last six to 12 months than there was in the previous year. I really can't give you a good comparison because I did a quote in Michigan and they were ridiculously high for me. When they start opening up the floodgates in Michigan more, they're probably gonna be a little bit more competitive, but right now compared to the company that I'm with, it would have almost doubled the price that I would have been paying. I can tell you, I've got some friends on YouTube that I watch and they're crushing it in Arizona, in California, in a bunch of other states. Florida is a hot state right now for Allstate and a few other states that are probably the more riskier ones, Allstate has a better handle on. If you're not sure, it doesn't hurt to do the quote. Go to allstate.com or fill out the cover one as well and check them all. It's up to you. It really doesn't hurt to check them. They're not really sharing any data that I found that was the first piece I dove into where they share with their own affiliates and Allstate actually doesn't have many affiliates in their system. So I'm not so worried about data breaches and anything like that for consumers. That's something I can't say for a lot of other companies. Unique coverages, they actually posted on their website from Value Penguin that they have a better coverage program in if you're gonna go into Mexico. So it sounds like they're competitive in Texas as well, which actually I know they are. Uh, Allstate Classic car insurance, so they offer a classic. That's something like State Farm is partnering with other companies to do. Allstate has that option for you. If you have modified vehicles, they have different things for that. And this is a powerful piece that I wanted to put in the discount section, but it was just so unique, I wanted to put it here. Allstate has a claims satisfaction guarantee. It's something that I think they're still doing. It's on Value Penguin's explanation. I didn't see it on Allstate's site. Uh, you'd have to do some more research into it. But what it is, is if you're dissatisfied with the claim, you can in writing explain what you weren't happy with. In, in most cases, in a lot of cases, they're offering to pay up to the next six months of your insurance to make it right. That might not be the case for people that are upset with thousands and thousands of dollars of claims, or it might be great for somebody that it actually benefits them long-term. I thought that was unique. It was pretty cool to see somebody do that. I really like that part. They offer a wide array of different coverages. So home, renters, condo, life, landlord, motorhome, pet insurance, motorcycle, boat, watercraft, off-road vehicles, classic insurance, and umbrellas. There are a lot of options that Allstate gives you. So is this a company for you? What do you think? I need to know in the comments below. Do you love them? Do you hate them? What was your experience? My personal opinion, I personally wouldn't shy away from them in either which way. Like I said, they're great in Texas. They're great in Florida. There's a ton of different places. They're powerful. They're one of those ones that would be on that side bucket of if I can't find something, if I already know these are my cheapest ones, I'm still going to check them because I think Progressive and I think Allstate and I think State Farm and those big guys, even though I don't love to have that massive large company base, are just powerful. They've got enough funds. They've got a spread off risk where they're usually really good at what they do. Now the reviews, I would check my local area, make sure that that's good. Otherwise, I wouldn't shy away from checking with Allstate. So your next step is to check out the most powerful piece of Allstate for discounts. They offer something called the DriveWise program. You should check out the DriveWise to see if that's a fit for you and see what kind of discounts that powerful piece is gonna have. 
Go ahead and check it out. Otherwise, I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I will see you in the next one.